What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Grand Horvath golf video. And today we're out here at the Dallas Athletic Club and we're doing an iron fitting from Mizuno. I'm super stoked. This is just gonna be an iron fitting and I have not got new irons in probably like five, six years. So this is gonna be a great day. I can't wait to get into this. This thing's awesome. All of our tour guys, before they hit anything, this is what they go on. Right. Um, we've been working on this thing for the past 12 years now. Um, not only does it get all the entire shaft system broken down to three shafts, I got your fly angle. Um, I'll be able to figure out where to split your setup. I can figure out your wedge gap. What is this thing, exactly? It's Mizuno shaft optimizer. So it's something that we've been working on for the past 10 years. You know, custom fitting's the new big thing. Yeah. Everyone's trying to custom fit, but when you look at my cart, I got 60 plus shafts in there. Yeah. So if we sat there and hit all those shafts, we'd be sitting here all day on the range. Right. I don't think you want to do that. Right. With this, it's going to take all the numbers and we'll break down the numbers and it's going to give you about three shaft recommendations from there. That's so cool. And from there, we can yeah. really figure out what's going to be the best shaft for your swing. That's awesome. So, want to warm up a little bit? Yeah, I can hit a couple. Yeah, I'm warm up, man. All right, yeah, so we just made it to the back of the range here. Got my man, Ridge. He's going to be fitting us today. Yes. And I'm um, going to hit a couple shots just to get warmed up. And then we're going to dive right into this. He has that sh that optimizer thing that's literally going to... There's so many shafts over there, like he said, but we're only we're going to narrow it down right away to a couple good shafts. We're only going to really test like two heads today. It's this JPX Tour right here. I don't know, nine, two, one, and then there's one other one. I just didn't want to go with the blades like Garrett plays. A little bit too... To uh, butter knife for me. Okay, right there is that there's no bias to it. Right. We're not a shaft company. Yeah. We don't make shafts. We get shafts from everybody else. So that's something that everyone can use. Awesome. That's one of the best parts about it is the fact that even though we're fitting, there's no bias to it. Yeah. I think we all have bias when it comes to golf clubs. I yeah, think we yeah, yeah. all come in here with these preconceived notions about this shaft works best for me. I read this on an online article. Right. This takes all those opinions out of there. Yeah. From there, we can really, this is where it gets fun. Mm -hmm. So this is where we can really start to break down your numbers. Um, club head speed's pretty cut and dry. 89 miles an hour, that's where you are. And then the rest of these are gonna be on a scale of one to nine. Now, one doesn't mean bad, nine doesn't mean good. It's just what your number is. Right. So your tempo is gonna be with four. So that's the difference in your backswing to your follow through. That one's pretty cut and dry. Toe down. Mm -hmm. So if we started your backswing, all right, and we had a slow motion camera and as your hands are dropping down, the toe of that club is gonna be pointing a little bit more towards the ground. Okay. So we're measuring the flexion of the shaft bend right there. Wow. All right, the kick angle. So that's the number here, number six. As you start your downswing, the shaft flexes again, and the heel of the club starts to point down to the ground as well. Gotcha. So if you notice, we're measuring more than one part of the shaft. Wow, it's not like just that. the tip of the shaft. Yeah, yeah. That's the interesting. The entire shaft profile, and then release factors lag. Does just Mizuno do that, or is that just This is just Mizuno. Wow, this is just cool. Mizuno. So before I was a fitter with Mizuno, though, I used this thing for all my fittings because everyone carries a golf pride or a, a dynamic gold shaft everyone's right. carrying a kbs shaft so even if i'm not fitting into mizunos which i hope everyone does jump on the optimizer to see what the numbers say right. because it's going to give you a really good idea of where to start okay. um and from here we got three options the dynamic gold 120 stiff the seat taper light extra stiff and a project deck 6.0 wow that's awesome so literally we already have three shafts that we can already on. broken down yeah and then if we look here these these are what's called an ei chart EI chart is going to tell us the overall flex of that shaft. So this is the grip end of the shaft. Mm -hmm. This is the club end of the shaft. Right. So we talked earlier about you hit the ball a little higher. See this dark blue line right here? Yeah. That dark blue line has this, the line right here on the tip a little higher. Okay. That tells us that ball is going to be a little bit more. Gotcha. So we go on standard length. We got your line going a half inch over. Oh, wow. So no more live boards, no more anything. There's an yeah. accelerometer in there. Oh, so you don't have to put the tape on it anymore. anymore. Oh, no. wow. Live boards lie. Think about it. Can I see that real quick? Yeah. So if I'm hitting on something that has a live board or has tape on it, right. all right, and let's just say hypothetically I turn that toe in a little bit more, right? Yeah. So if I'm here and I turn that club, did I change the line goal of that club? No. I didn't at all. Yeah. But I'm getting more of a toe strike. Right. Exactly. So all live boards, we always say live boards lie because you get a misread because you're getting that toe impact when all it is is just rotation. Right. You were talking earlier that your clubs are a little too upright. Right. Honestly, with the wind, even though it, you're missing a little bit more left. Right. So for us, we only have it half degree upright, the standard yeah. length. Mm -hmm. So all the static measurements are done. Now we just got to figure out what shaft's going to fit you, you the best. This is awesome. I am like 
See, I, I love the golf swing. I study the golf swing, but when it comes down to like specs and all this stuff, I'm completely my mind. I just it's not my like forte. All like lie angles, shafts, different stuff like that. I feel like well, I'm going to school again. Yeah, yeah, it's like we're learning. It's great. Or we're learning our own craft. Right. If Something you guys we got should. Any we're getting smart. You just you tell me what you guys think and what where you guys need a little bit more help understanding, and I'm here to help out. Yeah. Mozilla is kind of cutting the cutting the edge with technology. No more lie boards to get fit. Now it's just that literally will tell you you're lying. Which lie is boards insane. lie. Lie boards lie, like Rich said. <laughs> project X 6.0. All right. So well, we're I want to start out with this Project X 6.0 right here. And then we're gonna move to the other shafts, yep. right? Then we'll move through and kind of figure out from there. We'll kind of get a baseline, see if it's too high, too low, what you're feeling, and we'll kind of go from there. When it comes to shafts, especially. Let me know what you're feeling, what you're thinking, because I can tell you the numbers are great, but if you don't feel it, it doesn't feel comfortable right. in your hand, exactly. then was, there's no point. Hey, right, and I wanna, I wanna make sure this club feels good when I'm over it, and I don't feel like the, sh the shaft is maybe too stiff or too weak. Golf is too mental as yeah, it is. Yeah, I agree. You're playing right there the 921 Tours. We call those the chosen Whew. ones. And the reason we call those the chosen ones is there's more guys on tour playing that club that doesn't get paid than any other club in the market. Oh, gotcha, yeah. yeah. So that's why we've called right. it the chosen one. It's been a great club that since we launched it a few years ago, we've won four majors with it. Wow. And not a single penny has been paid to any of the guys who've won any tournaments with it. Oh, hey. That one feels good. Let's try I another. I really one. like it so far. We'll kind of go over numbers. What I'm looking at um, in a second. I'm not looking at distance. Right. I think distance, when it comes to irons, especially with someone as a ball striker like y'all, it's a little overrated. I'm looking for how do we stop the ball on the green and how do we hold a green. Right. You know, iron play. We're not playing croquet. We're playing darts. Right. We want that ball to stop. Exactly. So I'm kind of looking at launch parameters right now. It's kind of stuff. I switched you to the Dynamic Gold 120X. All right. So it's going to be a little similar shaft. It's going to have a little bit lower ball flight. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're getting to these shafts that are going to be about 125, 130 grams, they're going to be targeted towards the same person. Gotcha. So the best way to explain it, you got a Ford F-150 and a Chevy Silverado. To all feel now. All feel. All feel and preference at this point. Better. Much better. Yeah, that's a little bit lower. Didn't hit it great. It sounded a groove low. It was. It didn't hit that great, but that actually, that came out more piercing. That's what I want. You know what though, numbers. There it is. Ah, didn't hit it solid. But the last ball really kind of proved a good point though. You didn't hit that as well. Right. But your, your distance was only a couple yards shorter. You sure. still held the green and it still had perfect launch parameters. Yeah. So like you were saying earlier, Garrett's blades look pretty. <laughs> but is that something that we want on the course? Right. If we can quantitatively see this shaft and club is better for me than what, like a true blade, ego gets out the door because a lot of those guys on tour, they're trying to make money. Right. So if they're going to go into a club that's a little easier to play. Right. Yeah. Golf is hard. We're trying to make this game a little easier. Just make a good golf swing. So remember we talked earlier, I'm not looking at distance here. This distance, first off, two and a half club wind with a range ball it's going to be skewed. Right. But these numbers here, your spin rate, your launch angle, and your descent angle won't be skewed. Okay. Now, when you hit that ball, the wind started to gust. That's why that spin number is around 94. Right. Ideally, if you're hitting a 7 iron, you're going to take the club you're hitting, subtract 1, multiply it by 1,000. So here, you want your spin rate to be about 6, 6,500. Gotcha. All right? Your launch angle is actually low. I said that earlier. You have a low launch angle, but you do generate a lot of spin because you hit so down on it that you get away with it because your descent angle is higher. Right. I'd like to see your descent angle ideally around 45 to 50. Mm -hmm. I don't want it over 50. With the wind we're playing right now, that spin rate's going up, which is causing this to go up. Gotcha. So you remember what I was saying, how it's kind of an algebra equation? If this is higher, this will go higher. Right. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Gotcha. But we can kind of also average things out with this wind. So, so far, that's the winner of the shaft so far. I want to keep you around that 125 gram range. Right. So we're going to a new shaft, 120 grams, Project X LS shaft. Okay. LS stands for low spin because you don't 
have a problem spinning the ball. Right, I spin it a lot. Yes, I spin it way too much. And this is a brand new shaft they came out with. We actually added this to our matrix in the middle of the season. Awesome. First time we've ever done it. It's actually standard length, so it's gonna be a touch shorter, but we do know the length already. All right. the best swing of the day. That's good. I really I really do like this shaft. When I actually do hit it solid on the face, you know, I'm not thinning it. It is going really really a solid ball play. I think we're down to two shafts. Yeah. That's it. The Dynamic Gold 120X and then we have the Project X LS65. Perfect. Or 60 and we're going to kind of go between those two and right now Strictly feel. Yeah. Strictly feel. We're really looking at numbers. I mean, I could tell you right now, one's probably launching a touch lower, uh, which is the Dynamic Gold 120X, but it's so marginal right. to where it really needs to be at the end of the day now what's confident in your feel. Yeah, and I, I do want to lower my ball flight. So if I can get anything to come out a little bit lower, I'm going to have to stick with that because I just, I always hit everything high. Oh my gosh. I like how it's coming out low like that. Yeah. I think the other thing is too, these grips are a lot smaller than mine. Yeah, you play a mid size. Right, so it's easier. I'm pull My ball flight's going a little bit left right now due to my hands turning over a little bit easier because the grips are smaller. That's one of the biggest challenges with these. I, we just can't carry another <laughs> entire group of those in mid size. Exactly. Oh my gosh, that's the best. All right. That one went a lot farther than the other shaft it looked like. I I really like the launch parameters with this one yeah. a lot. Um, I, and what I really like too is I feel like you're really comfortable with it in your hands. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of second guessing and questioning it. You're just kind of gripping it and ripping it. Yeah. It's just coming out so much lower. It's just boom, piercing. I hate when I hit iron shots and they just float up in the air. It's the worst feeling in the world. I don't know what that follow through was, but I loved it. I, I like the dynamic gold a little bit better than this one, I'm not gonna lie. For sure. That number one option, that dynamic gold. Yeah. It nailed it. Yeah. It nailed it. It's dynamic gold. So we got you a quarter inch over, got you a half degree upright. Let's try the other head. Maybe we can even get, even get a little bit lower than that. You definitely can with this one. So with this club here, the MMC, there's a little bit more titanium right behind the face right. and a little bit more tungsten titanium in the toe. What that does, it also the more mass you have behind the face, the higher that launch is. Oh, gotcha. So it actually is going to launch it a little higher, but they are two degrees stronger, so it's going to balance oh, it out. Oh, okay. I see. Grant, if you do it again, I'm going to... What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? Tell, them, tell the people. Can I do something bad. I think I made up my mind. It just doesn't look as good. I mean, it's nice, but the JPX is just, it's too good. Golf's the only thing in life you can be like, I don't like the way that looks, and you right. get away with that. It's yeah. all right, fair enough. <laughs> now the JPX, it, it looks too good. I just, I can't do it. Guys, this has been, this has been unreal. It's crazy because it's so easy with that, that mechanism, they have that little robot on your club. That literally just cuts out all the different shafts and narrows you down to a couple. Dynamic Gold was the one that felt the best for sure. Really, really happy with this fitting, guys. I feel like I've actually found an iron that is going to launch at a good angle and not balloon on me. And a, a, a head that's somewhat forgiving. It's not too blady. So, this is just the iron fitting part of the series I'm gonna do. Cause I'm gonna get my irons fit. I'm probably gonna do wedges and then probably like driver and wood. So I'm gonna break this down. But today we just strictly did irons and we're set on this. So hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, leave a like. Peace out.